Hi, this is Kim Ironman from Eco Beneficial, bringing you more useful tips to help improve our environment. Today, I have the pleasure of being at the Flying Trillium Gardens and Preserve in Neversink, New York, and I'm going to be interviewing Carolyn Summers. Hey, Carolyn, what a great place you have here! Thank you, Kim. We love it. <laughs> Now, I know Carolyn for quite a few years um, through the Native Plant Center in New York, and we both uh, are on the steering committee there, and we both teach in their Native Studies program. Carolyn, I didn't know what a gem you had until I came up today. <laughs> Thank you very much. You've been working on this for quite a few years. Tell us a little bit of the background of um, this wonderful Native Preserve. Well, um, I used to work uh, around here. I used to work for the New York City DEP, and so we, I was very familiar with watershed territory, of which we're, we're in the New York City watershed. And um, some friends of ours have a house nearby, a, a weekend house, and we thought, well, maybe we could have a weekend house. And it sort of grew from that. It, it's really extraordinary, and we're going to explore some of these uh, habitats that you have on 220 acres, is that yes, right? That's right. Wow, that sounds like a fantastic garden. So let's take a look around. Carolyn, one thing that strikes me about this wonderful place is the amazing natural elements that you've used, the structures, and how you've um, had really just found materials mm -hmm. creating these amazing structures like this gazebo here and some of the walkways. Tell us a little bit about this work. Well, I've been very lucky to find really wonderful craftspeople around here locally. Um, this, um, the pergola, which is actually serving as my deer fence, was created by Hoppy Quick, who normally does bears. <laughs> he does chainsaw bears, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and I sort of pushed him a little bit, and he, he was here for a long time working on this, and he made a magnificent gazebo to go with the, uh, you know, to actually frame the, the whole pergola system. And then after that, he made me that beautiful bog walk and we'll, we'll take a look at some of these elements, but I think it's a reminder to listeners that uh, you can use some natural elements to actually enhance your garden, and this certainly does. Let's take a look at some of the interesting plants that you have here. Carolyn, you've got some great examples of using native plants in more formal settings, and this perennial bed is uh, just beautiful. Tell us what you have planted in here. Well, um, I tried to have a lot of full season interests, so Phlox paniculata, garden phlox, is very common and easy to find plant. You can find that in any nursery. And it has a really, really long blooming season. Um, one of the things I did when I researched my book was look at the blooming periods of native plants because a lot of people thought that native plants didn't really bloom for such a long period of time, but actually that's not true. So um, I did a little bit of research and phlox was one of the best. Um, it also comes in, you know, all these different hues, these different purpley lilac hues, which I really like a lot. And I wanted something that would combine well with Campanula Americana, which is tall bellflower. It's a beautiful blue flower behind us. And I had seen that years ago at the New York Botanical Garden and always wanted to use it somewhere. It's not an easy plant to use because it is a true biennial. And so you have to um, actually disturb the soil and in, in order for it to be able to self-sow. So every year you have to go in and kind of Mm -hmm. mess things up a little bit. And you, you've just got a really interesting grouping of plants. I see as a border you've got um, a plant that I really love which is a little blue stem but a selection called prairie munchkin. A brilliant choice for a front of the border plant. Thank you. And t tell us about that plant if people don't know it. Well Little blue stem is a pretty common, um, uh, it's commonly grows in um, almost any um, waste place or any vacant lot that's in upstate New York. You don't see it so much around the city, um, but it's, it, likes, uh, it likes abuse. It likes dry, um, sunny spots. Um, it's pretty much, you can plant it anywhere. It'll also grow in a little bit of shade. So this particular cultivar is a dwarf, so it makes, like you said, a perfect um, edging for, for, for a low edging in front of a tall border. Um, I, you could also um, use little um, the little blue, that little blue stem, mm -hmm. and that one has more of a fountain shape to it. So depending on what your needs mm -hmm. are, or you can just throw down some seed. Mm -hmm. And I also love the wonderful logs that you've laid out at the edge of the border. Um, it's a brilliant choice, and that's really simple. Yeah, no, we happened to have some, um, we had to take down some uh, birches that were taking over the field, and what better way to edge the border? It looks beautiful. Thank you. This is Kim Ironman from Eco Beneficial. Thanks for watching. For more useful tips, please visit www.ecobeneficial.com.